Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to show you how to play Hues and Cues. It's ages 8 and up, 3 to 10 players, and it says it takes 30 minutes on the box, but that depends on how many players you have, and most of our games are well under 20 minutes. Let me show you how to play. The goal of the game is to get the most points, which you do by guessing as close as possible to a specific color or uh, hue out here. Uh, to begin, you take tokens for each of the players playing. We're saying this is a four player game, so we'll clear these tokens away. And according to the rules, whoever is wearing the most colorful outfit goes first, will say that that is blue and then these are the rest of them. And all you do on your turn, blue takes this card and they don't show it to anyone else and they can pick one of these four colors, the specific hue mentioned here that they are trying to get everyone else to guess. If you're playing with younger players, you are allowed to have them just look out at the board and pick a specific spot they think they might be easier. So if they think they have a really good one for this spot, they would just reference J6, write it down on a piece of paper and not show anybody, and then try to have everyone guess this specific spot. Okay, so we'll say that blue is trying to have everyone guess B13. And so to start, they give everyone a one word clue. It cannot be a common color name, they can't just say red, but it can be an abstract color name. So if it was blue, they could go cerulean. Uh, if you know what the mauve is, then there you go, go ahead and use that. Um, and you can't refer to the direction on the board or something in the room. But for this, they could say fire, and then Yellow puts one where they think it's fire. Same thing with white and purple. Now, this player gets to give a two word clue uh, if they choose. It is technically optional, but the way you score, you typically want to give your second clue. If um, we'll show the scoring thing at the end, and if they have enough in within that, then they might choose to not give another clue, but typically you give another one. So they would say fire truck, and then we move back counterclockwise, purple went last. So they get to go again, what they think looks like a fire truck. Uh, this person might go over here, and this person chooses this spot. And uh, notice how no one is saving and sharing a spot. You cannot ever go in another spot with somebody else. It always has to be a unique spot. And then when everyone has placed their second token, it is time to score. Now it is time to score. That's what this little device is for. You place this where the center of it is the spot everyone was supposed to guess. So this was B13. That is the correct hue they were supposed to guess. That is in the center. And how scoring works is the center spot is worth three. Any of these spots right by the center are worth two. And then any of the spots along that are worth one. So the extra little token you have is for scoring. So player uh, purple would have four points. White wouldn't get anything for this, but would get two for here. Yellow would have a total of three points, and then blue, the person giving the clues, just gets one point for each of one of the other player's pieces that's within this little box. So they also get points. They have three total points. And you'll notice that there isn't a spot along this side for scoring. If you pick a spot near the side of the board, there are just fewer scoring opportunities for that spot. So if they had picked A17, it would have looked like this. And yeah, there's only six possible spots within the scoring square if you do that. So just that is something to take into account as you play the game. And from here, play proceeds clockwise to the next player. And you play until each player has gotten to give uh, clues two times if you're playing with six or fewer players. And if you're playing with seven or more, you continue to play until everyone has given cues just once 
and then you see where uh, people's score is at the end of the round after everybody's had seven, um, after you've gone around seven or more times, however many people you have, and whoever's the most points is the winner. In the case of a tie, whoever was the most recent to give cues is the winner. So that's how to play hues and cues. It's easy to learn, fun to play, challenging to win, and clearly not for the colorblind among us, but still a very fun game. So go check it out. Thanks and see you next time from Game Like a Mother.